Hey guys, welcome back to the California Ant Keeper channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my full ant setups, but first I wanted to show you my Acromermix Versicolor, also known as the Desert Leaf Cutting Ant. I never thought I would be keeping this type of ant, but the opportunity came up and a buddy sent me a few queens. Right now all they have is one speck of fungus that they'll be tending to until the workers come. The fungus needs to be kept at 90% to 100% humidity in order to grow. So I took these little Tupperware and I made a layer of plaster so that way I can hydrate the ants on a regular basis. And as you can see the fungus is already starting to grow a little bit bigger. I was given a tip to give them cornflakes because they will actually feed the cornflakes to the fungus and this tip has actually worked out. Alright enough of these queens we'll check back on them in a few months and hopefully they have workers by then. Let's get into my ant setups. I'll start off with my feeders. These are my flightless fruit flies. I purchased these culture cups from Amazon for $25 from Josh's Frogs. The 10 cultures that I can make in the kit will last me about 4 months of feeding all my colonies. You will have to go to your local pet store and buy some fruit flies to start this though. Alright we'll start off in my dining room with my favorite colony. I keep them in there because I like to look at them so much. My Novo Messer Cockerelli. I just gave them a few crickets so they're really active right now. Normally they do not look like this and the outworld is pretty empty, but as soon as I throw some food in they go crazy. This is a double sided nest so I keep the paper on there to keep it all dark on one side. And they stay on the side where it's dark the most, but there are ants on the other side too. This colony is currently eating 4 crickets, 4 or 5 crickets, and 600 fruit flies a day. And I have a heat pad under this nest that keeps it hot 24-7 because these guys really love the heat. I love how fearless these guys are when it comes time for food. And then I have the giant tank next to it that will probably be their new outworld soon. Um, I'm kind of on the fence though because I think it would be a really cool outworld for the Acromermix too. I could just throw some plants in there and they could just go in there and forage for the plants and cut them out. Alright next stop we go down the unnecessarily long hallway and in here I keep my Acromermix Versicolor. And the reason why I keep them here is because it stays about 74 degrees to 76 at all times. This is literally the only place I could find that stayed that temperature constantly and you could see the thermometer next to it. And it looks like they're doing pretty good so far. You could see the little fungus. Oh, it's, it's getting bigger. It's a good sign. Alright, next step, my Campanatus cupboard. And I keep my Campanatus in this cupboard during the summer because it, it just gets too hot in my garage. And they, they seem to thrive in here. You can see my Campanata CaO2. And then my Campanata Kirkacola slash Labismus, whatever you prefer to call them. And there's my Campanata Vicinus. And some Andre. Alright, now off to the main place where I keep all my ants. My garage. And you can see the ant mobile right there. You gotta have something fast to go get your ants. Alright, and then off to the right I have my workbench, and this is where I make all my nests if I have to, if I have to fix a nest, if I have to cut up any of my feeder ants, this is just my workplace, and I have all kinds of random stuff here. Fish flakes, because ants like their fish flakes. My knife to cut up the bugs, a skewer if I have to poke anything. I got seeds up here, drills, all kinds of stuff, and water. I use bottled water for everything with the ants. Alright, this table is normally where I keep all my ants, and I'm sure you've seen it a lot, especially in some of my earlier videos. And right now it's too hot to keep all my colonies in here all day. It gets about 100 degrees, sometimes hotter in here during the day. So I only have my desert species out here right now. But even, it gets so hot I even worry for them some days. And here's my daughter's Campanatus fragilis colony. They're doing pretty good. They don't like this side of the nest because there's a lot more light on it and these guys hate the light. You can see they're mostly there. They're all full of sugar. So they're doing pretty good ever since I moved them into this nest. Pretty good. And then of course there are the Leos. And these guys just keep growing and growing and growing. I put a little bit of water in parts of the nest. You can see it right there. Or this isn't the nest portion but more of an outworld slash satellite nest and then the tube connected to this goes to an outworld that I made for them follow the tube 
there's a split and then it goes into this out world and every time I open this out world I get at least 10 escapees so I just threw that cricket in there you can see I'm swarming it these guys are really fun to watch swarm things and they're getting a lot bigger the workers are getting a lot bigger so it's pretty cool to see you hardly ever see the full size work Leo workers in captivity and these guys always bring their brood out when it's not hot enough for them and today's a weird day it's a it's a cool day in August and that never happens so it's about 75 degrees out right now 80 in the garage but you can see the size of the workers and they're getting bigger really polymorphic I've been really cutting down on their protein though because I just don't want this colony to get out of control. I'd rather keep them around this size for a while so I don't have to add on. And just like the pioneer nest that the Nova Messer are in, this is a double sided nest. So I like to keep the paper on one side so if I want to take a look in, all the ants will be on that side. Alright, off to my random ant cupboard. And right here you can see... Ants got all their workout equipment in case they want to lift some weights, get stronger. And then in this cupboard right here is all pretty much random ants. So these ones are ones that I don't really have enough nests for, so I just made these. They're pretty much just tub and tube setups. This is pretty much the cupboard where I just keep the ants that I don't care as much about, to be honest. But sometimes some stuff in here surprises me and starts doing really good. So, And then I put it into a better nest. And then right here is my quarantine zone. Because it has my fire ant colony on it. And I don't want these getting to any of my other ant colonies. So I keep them very far away. And I also have two more Leo colonies up here. And I keep them far away too. Because the nests that they're in are not that good and Leo proof. So... If they get out, they won't kill other colonies. These these colonies are just starting. They're maybe like a month and a half old. And the queen's hiding in there under a piece of foil. And then under these colonies, I have my incubator. And this is where I keep my honeypot ants. And today's the first day I actually had to turn off the incubator. You can see it's 81 degrees in there. And it's off right now. I just have the fan running in there, so... There's fresh air moving around inside there. And you can see they're doing pretty good. But the honey pots are the only thing I have in the incubator right now. And speaking of incubator, I want to show you my heating setup on my ant bench. And it's controlled by the ink bird. And the ink bird controls a heating pad that's underneath those pogos right now and it controls that brown wire right there and if it drops below 77 degrees it, the heat turns on all right that's my full ant setup thanks for watching guys see you next time